The next part which is actually called the small lotus, I'm sorry, that's this part here, yeah, this is called the small lotus, then comes the large lotus, and then we go on. This is relating to the six transcendent qualities, they're called parameters in Sanskrit, sometimes they're called the six perfections. Now these are very interesting qualities because actually, in general, we are in our search for, for happiness and in our search for stability, we always try to hold on to something. Either ideas or other people or a certain plan. But because of the things being transitory and changing, this never really works out. And so there's a constant struggle going on there and a tension to, to find stability by holding on to a person or to uh, an identity or an object or something or a situation and it never really works out. But these qualities actually, which are qualities which are inherent in our being, when they become strong and, and, and we train in them and we develop them, actually they, they rise up from the ground, from the depth of our mind and they stabilize the mind without the need to grasp at anything. So a being which has well developed these qualities can just remain open and stable without the need for any thing or anyone to hold on to or attach to. So there's great benefit in that, great benefit for mental stability and mental well-being. What comes after this, after the small lotus now, these all the way up to I think all the way up to here, we'll see in a moment, constitutes the 37 steps of enlightenment, branches of enlightenment and or factors, factors of enlightenment, factors of awakening. Now the base throne, so the small and the large lotus actually are the six parameters. The base throne, which is this one, very solid, this stands for what I call the four limitless ones and these are again qualities to, to cultivate in one's mind which are actually in the natural mind these qualities are naturally present. Only in the con con conceptual mind, in the artificial mind, these qualities are sometimes there, sometimes not. But in a naturally open and relaxed mind, they are present by nature. These are love, compassion, joy and equanimity. Love is actually the wish, excuse me, love actually in the teachings of the Buddha is the wish that all sentient beings, without exception, might be happy and have the causes of happiness. Based, of course, on the understanding that our personal experience arises out of our own actions in relation with the world. Compassion means that all beings might be free from suffering and the causes of suffering. Joy actually means to rejoice in others' well-being, to rejoice in what others have, good things going in their lives, rejoice in the happiness of others. And equanimity actually comes from wisdom, comes from understanding that fundamentally there is no difference between all of us. That means, fundamentally, all beings have one wish. They wish to be happy. And they wish to avoid suffering. But more than that, our true nature actually is not separated. What separates us is the identification with a certain conceptual and physical reality. Yeah? But fundamentally, in fact, 
in our what is called the, the awakened nature, this separation does no longer exist. And that's why equanimity arises out of this realization. At that stage, when equanimity is fully integrated, there is no near and no far. There's always the same, same close, warm, joyful, compassionate and loving relation with all of, all of existence, yeah? all, all beings. Now we come to these steps here, these different steps. The first step here is what the Buddha taught as being the foundations of mindfulness. Mindfulness comes from when we learn how to keep our mind from wandering off. Normally, we have many thoughts arising and many of these thoughts we pursue actively. Yes, we, we, you can also call that the soap opera aspect of our mind. All the problems and plans and relationships and everything that is constantly going on where we're constantly thinking, 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 thinking. can be very exhausting. Mindfulness means to be able to, to let that be for a moment and remain present. This mindfulness, training in mindfulness, afterwards actually becomes the cause of awareness. Because we are present, we have actually more awareness of what is happening. And the more we are present, and the more we, we um, relax in that present, the deeper our awareness will be. The more we are able to perceive of what is happening. These four foundations of mindfulness, they are mindfulness of our body, mindfulness of our feelings, of our mind, and of phenomena. Phenomena means everything that is going on around us, but also everything actually that the definition the Buddha gave for phenomena actually means everything that seems to possess characteristics, meaning color, shape, sound, form, and so on. The next step here stands for perfect effort on the path to enlightenment. 